you, you probably saw also some Democrats are saying it's not just the embargo that's the problem. No, the it's, actual- it's not. You know, this issue is it's not just one facet, but where the U.S. has historically been most aggressive in uh, and where we, you know, in bringing up the embargo, you're pointing to the U.S. role, whereas and what and U.S. actions, because if you leave that gaping uh, opening, my concern is that people are trying to lay the groundwork for regime change. Lay the groundwork for regime change. What do you know? Of course, Acacia Cortez is worried that the people of Cuba might actually pose a real threat to the communist government they got over there. What is going on, everybody? My name is James with Heavyweight Politics, and today, well, we're talking about Cuba again. Why? Because this is an important issue, and it really shows something that, you know, we, we talk about left quite a bit, right? We talk about how the left loves communism. They don't, you know, they don't just love the idea. They love the implementation of it to a point where even when they are out there slaughtering their people by the you know, slaughtering them by the hundreds, by the thousands, even in Soviet Union's case, by the millions, they will still do whatever they can to defend what is happening. So, of course, Ocasio-Cortez, as well as their Democrats, are running defense for Cuba, and they're running defense so fast, it is amazing what's actually happening right now in D.C., Apparently, some people put Cuba or Cuba Libre on the street in the same way they did Black Lives Matter, right? In the same exact way they did Black Lives Matter. And the government is now going down there and erasing it completely. So let's get this straight. They were okay with using taxpayer dollars, taxpayer dollars, to put up Black Lives Matter, a movement that we know was built upon lies, right? The Michael Brown, you know, hands up, don't shoot never happened right it never once happened he was assaulting the officer i think he broke his ocular bone as well when the officer finally shot right hands up don't shoot never happened this idea that blacks are being killed at a disproportionate rate compared to whites when you factor in the amount of crime that gets committed by both sides is completely untrue the idea of systematic racism being the main driving point of what's happening when it comes to blacks being killed by police is not true we know this not to be true, right? We know this does not actually exist. Anyone who's looked at any of the stats knows this doesn't exist, right? It is so obvious, yet we still, we made Black Lives Matter Plaza. We turned an entire plaza, we named an entire plaza after a political movement. We used taxpayer dollars to put a political message that sides with the idea of Marxism. And that's not me saying it, that's what Black Lives Matter put on their own website, that they were avowed Marxist, that they were against the family union, that they were against the ideas of capitalism, which means they're against the idea of freedom. They're against the idea that you own your own labor. If you are against capitalism, guess what? You are against freedom. Own up to it. Please, just finally, please own up to it. If you don't like capitalism, you don't like people being free to make their own choices. So it was fine when we painted Black Lives Matter on, you know, multiple streets. Here in Charlotte, we did the same damn thing over here at, you know, one of our streets, so you know, downtown. And, of course, that was the main part of Charlotte that got hit pretty hard during the riots. What do you know? Same thing, of course, happened in D.C. But when people who actually are oppressed, when people actually are oppressed, that is when we'll make sure their message gets scrubbed completely. So, today we got this quick little article here from the Washington Post. You know, Cuban Libre painted outside uh, the embassy of Cuba in Washington, which is whoever did this just... Hats off to you, man, or woman, I don't know. Hats off to whatever group did this. Great job. That is proper civil disobedience right there. Big old middle finger right to the Cuban embassy. That's what we want to see because guess what? I don't want to respect totalitarians, right? Or people who have totalitarian governments, right? I don't want to respect people who are dictators. I don't want to respect these people. Why would any of us want to give them respect? All right, they're evil you know, they're, they're, they're evil bastards, right? We don't care about them, nor should we care about them. So, you know, great job, whoever did this. Um, you can see a picture of it, you know, all right here, Cuban Libre. The words Cuba Libre were seen painted in large letters on the street outside the Embassy of Cuba in Northwest Washington on Friday, and an expression of solidarity with the thousands of anti-government protesters across Cuba. Fantastic, right? These are the people who actually want 
to be aligned with. We actually want to be aligned with people who are fighting for freedom. You know, for this entire time, the government's been wanting to line up with people who are avowed Marxists. It's about time that we get some people out there doing, you know, using their tactics to actually express a positive message instead of a divisive one, a Marxist one, and an evil one, right? This is fantastic to see. The lettering outside of the embassy appears to be in the style of the street letters at Black Lives Matter Plaza near the White House and was noticed by residents on, and shared on social media. D.C. Department of Public Works crew arrived outside the embassy afternoon to remove the unauthorized painting, according to spokesperson Eric Cunningham or Erika Cunningham. Not sure. And it is worth pointing out. Guess what? Yeah, it wasn't done all legally but neither was original some of the original black lives matter ones right i think the one in new york wasn't actually commissioned by the government there it was just put up and then they put some people there to defend it i know the one down where i live that one was commissioned by our um unfortunately was commissioned by our city but there was a few of these that popped up for black lives matter that were not commissioned by the city that they allowed to stay yet the cuba one i don't know we gotta tear that one down now, they do have a statement down here. Despite the systemic policy of confrontation uh, and aggression of the United States government against Cuba, the American diplomats who work in the U.S. Embassy in Havana have always been safe and have never been the objects of attacks or, or other manifestations of hatred. The Cuban government expects the same behavior on the U.S. side. Again, we're back to this idea of words are violence, apparently, because that apparently justifies an attack, right? We're going to actually put those on the same footing. So I'm putting on a message on the street as an attack. Eh, you know what? We should be attacking. If that's attack, then we should be attacking, right? We should be putting out more messages condemning the Cuban government. We should be putting them out there every single day. The same thing for North Korea, the same thing for China. If we want to, we can even add Russia to the list, even though I'll be honest, I don't really know what Russia really does anymore when you compare them to, you know, other places like China. As far as I'm concerned, China is definitely the bigger threat to Russia. But hey, you know, if you want to insult Russia, let's insult Russia. I really don't care. It, we shouldn't have an issue when it comes to protesting any government. It does not matter. And the fact that they would even compare this to, you know, the object of attacks. It's just people protesting, man. Get over yourself. Just get over yourself. And, of course, then they go on to say, of course, Biden has said, you know, he shows support for the demonstrators. But the fact is, many on the left have not. In fact, many on the left have attacked the demonstrators. We just saw Ocasio-Cortez, of course, going out there and saying, oh, she's, she's worried about regime change. We should be happy to see a regime change. We should be happy to see a regime change possibly, you know, taking place. That would be so exciting. It would be it would be great news for the people living there. But then you also have Black Lives Matter, who it turns out, of course, they were also in support of the Cuban government. You know, they were saying that, you know, they were um, concerned that the revolution might fail. And, of course, when they use the term revolution in Cuba, revolution means the establishment government, right? So the left is on Cuba's side on this. Do not misunderstand because of just Biden throws out a couple words here and there. The majority of the left, especially when we look on stuff like Twitter, they're on the side of the Cuban government. Major, major influences on the left are all on the side of the Cuban government. The only people who are on the side of the actual Cuban people tend to be on the right. And this is where the Republicans are actually succeeding for once. And it's really good to see that Republicans are actually really starting to man up and say, you know what, this is wrong, we need to oppose Cuba in every way, shape, and form, and the fact that you aren't opposing Cuba is a little disturbing, to say the least, right? You have multiple people, even people like Marco Rubio, who I'm not the biggest fan of, to be honest, he still had some good statements to go on about what was going on in Cuba, obviously with his background, right? You have other people who are more establishment, you know, Republicans who are still actually taking this call and saying, no, we need to fight for the Cuban people. This is great to see. Now, of course, most of those people are probably on board with this because, let's face it, they're starting to be phased out by the new crop of Republicans coming up, which is great. But it's still good to see the lip service being paid. It's also good to see us actually really starting to take it to Democrats and the idea of why are you supporting these people? Why are you supporting dictatorships? Why are you supporting communism? This needs to be an open discussion. We need to be talking all the time. Why does the left support communism? Why does the left support this modern form of slavery? And that's what communism truly is. It is a modern form of slavery where the government gives you what you need, nothing more, and you still have to work 
it, it, you don't you don't work for yourself. You work for them, right? You work for the government. They give you what you need, and that's it. We need to get away from this modern idea, you know, modern form of slavery, which is communism. And of course, the left, who uh, you know, let's face it, Democrats, you know, they fought for slavery, and now they're fighting for it again when it comes to the idea of communism. Either way, this painting I thought was pretty awesome to see out there. It's great to see some people giving kind of the middle finger to the Cuban government like this. It's also great to see people on the right using the tactics of the left against them. So maybe we'll see more stuff like it. Maybe some more people will go out there and redo it. You know, fingers crossed. And we'll find out, I guess, here in the future what's going to be happening with the Cuban people. But obviously, you know, I, I got friends who are Cuban, so they're talking about it nonstop, which means, of course, I'm probably going to make videos about it as it keeps happening. Either way, what do you think? Is this fantastic? Is it not so good? You know, should we be a bit worried about what's going to be happening in Cuba over the coming years? Or should we just ignore it completely because it's not us, which I know a lot of my libertarian friends definitely think. Either way, you know, comment below, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you again real soon.